Hey guys, before the video starts, I just want to say that I lost the new footage I had for this video, so I'm just gonna do this old video I used for the last video, so bear with me for a bit, okay? I'll have new footage by the next video. Well, anyways, today we will be talking about Onkai Star Rail, and if people might not want to play Star Rail, and also we'll talk about why they might not be wanting to play the game, and also why it would be a good game to play. But with all that said, I think we we'll just start talking about it right now. But before we start, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I make daily videos on Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. Okay, now back to the video. So why did I say could Honkai Star Rail fail? Well, there's a few reasons why it could fail, but at the same time, those are just some criticism of uh, what the game is. But why people think it will fail is because of the turn-based game because people will find it slow and also what I've seen is from the beta there hasn't seemed to be that much end game so it probably will be the same problem like Genshin and also I should probably say this is just speculations on what I think might be in Honkai Star Rail so yeah what I think might happen is because since there's not much in the beta we don't exactly know but what I think will happen is they probably might add more in the full game because even though that was the final beta, I still think there might be one more beta before the game fully comes out too. So there might be more things added in the game. And also I can see why some people might be turned off by Star Rail. Because what I've seen is much more grindier than Genshin. And that is a good thing and also a bad thing at the same time. Because the only way I see Star Rail to succeed is that I need to be a hard challenging game where you test your strategies on what correct team comps you can make to beat the flaws. And if it's not really that, I don't see the game prospering unless it's a challenging game. Because what's the point of playing a game that's easy if we can just play Genshin Impact for that reason? Or, or Honkai Impact which does have end game at the same time. It's so, the character so broken in that game, it just makes that game more of a breeze to play. Which is a, a good thing by itself, but at the same time, I feel like if Daryl needs to differentiate itself from the other two games, it, Daryl really needs to be more of a challenge. Because for a few reasons, one, because Daryl is in no really open world, like you can explore an area to an extent, but it's not to the level of Genshin, it's more of the level of Honkai Impact when you have to just uh, attack and walk around the world at the same time in Honkai you can at least fight the enemies in the open world like in a combat style but when you fight the enemies in Star Rail you just activate the turn based elements of the game and to its fairness you can at least like use your elements to like stun and break the shield immediately at the same time there's not really a bunch of exploring you can do so I really think it needs to be like a hard challenge for Star Rail because I don't think Star Rail should be an easy game I think it should be between a medium to a difficult level game that is accessible to all types of players for both whales and free to play and light spenders in Honkai Star Rail because it now will attract a different type of audience a more grindy focused audience which would be a good thing because what more Hoyo wants or Hoyoverse wants uh, is for everyone to play their game at the same time as I said in my last video that's really not possible you have casual players and then you have sweaty players I would say for Star Rail you should focus on the sweaty players well not sweaty the hardcore players because I think those will be the people that will play the game the most because I know there will be casual players like Every game will have this, these types of players. They will have the casual players, the meta players, and the uh, mix between the two of them. And also because why I say you should focus on the meta players more than the casuals uh, is because uh, with the same logic I said before and a few minutes ago, well, I don't think this game should be easy if Staryl wants to succeed. It should be like a medium to high challenge. And of course, once you go in the game and you grind it, it's not gonna be as hard as I think it's gonna be. Because, like in Genshin, I remember when the game first launched, uh, everyone tried to beat the Abyss and everyone was just struggling and 
it was something it took like a few abyss or moon because i think you have to be like ar 45 and have gold artifact to even try the 36 star the abyss but yeah that's one reason why i think it should be a grind that or should be a game of nutrition which which means uh, nutri what i mean by nutrition is by if you can't beat it now you just have to level up your character and get them uh, stronger it's like doing exercise if you want to get stronger you have to go on a run you have to exercise you have to eat healthy same logic with that but there's poor level up material their signature weapon I feel like I think it light combs I think it call and yeah and this and you won't be able to beat it on the first day but it'll take a while for it to finish your grinding all your crafters up so you can beat the harder content of the game like I'm pretty sure the story will be easy but the end game there needs to be end game for this game or this game will be doomed by doomed I mean because some people, a lot, well by some I mean a lot of people from Genshin gets quitted because they can already beat the Abyss, they don't need no more crafters, the artifacts are already at the best they can do and it is, even if you grind for artifacts, what's the point of grinding for artifacts in Genshin when you can't even use it anywhere? Because if the highest content is the Abyss and if you can already beat it, what's the point of grinding for new artifacts or new characters? Like that. So that's why I'm saying Honkai Star Rail needs to have some sort of end game or replayable content other than the story. Because Genshin get a technical pass from this because for one reason, because you can do other things than fight enemies, you can explore, there's a lot of story quests you can do, all the crafters, the hangout events, completing the world exploration, there's a lot you can do in Genshin. And even if people are burnt out of Genshin, they will still like to have some form of endgame content. Hell, if you do some sort of endgame for Genshin, I'm pretty sure those hardcore players will come back. But I think that's enough for today because I'm... Uh, I don't know, I just... I really don't want to Honkai Star Rail to fail. But I don't think it will fail at the same time. I don't want to face the same problem Genshin having right now with some of their players because if they don't have some kind of endgame, I don't think Honkai and uh, get yeah, Honkai style will last uh, that long. It might last a few good years, but I don't think it'll last forever. Because they can't really get away with that, so be lot like Genshin, because there's not really much you can do. Because they really have to focus on the co-op mode in Starreal and some sort of heavy end game in, in Honkai Starreal. I maybe add PvP, but with what I said, I appreciate you for making this far. If you did, like, comment, tell me you made this far, and tell me what you think, what should be in Star Rail, and I would really appreciate that. But all I said, this is me talking about if on Kai Star Rail could fail, and uh, with all I said, take care, love you guys, stay safe, goodbye.